Hi. This video is about how I get video through a dissecting microscope. Here's a pair of circa 1970s American optical dissecting microscopes. The one on the right is an American Optical 570, which is 7 power to 42 power. And the one on the left is an American Optical 569, which is 7 power to 30 power. I'll just say something about these microscopes to begin with. When people ask me, you know, my kids are interested in microscopy, you know, what kind of microscope should I get? How much should I spend? Whatever. I, I invariably say, start them off with a nice stereo dissecting microscope. They're easy to use. They're pretty inexpensive, especially like these old guys. You can get them for a few hundred dollars. You can start the kids off with something they can look at coins or jewelry or bugs. And they get that stereo view, so both eyes get engaged. They're just really wonderful microscopes to have around. If you get one with a dedicated video port, which would be a third port coming out the top, they get quite pricey. And people want to take video uh, through their dissecting microscope. So I'm just going to show how I get video through these microscopes. The lighting for these can be a bit tricky. Uh, usually you can find the microscopes pretty easily, but finding the original light sources is a little bit harder. In this case, there's a lighting head on it, and there's two slots, depending on what angle you want the light to come down onto the platform. And then the controller here has a low, medium, and a high. Right, so that just comes out of this mostly collimated light source. You can also get things like this fluorescent ring light and that can be, you can adapt these to sit under. I find that the lighting from an overhead ring is good if they're looking at circuit boards or something, but this oblique angled light that you get from uh, an off-axis source. You can set it out here or, you know, out there. You can get little stands for them or make your stand. Uh, you just get much better relief in what you're looking at. That, to me, is a, is a good way to go. And there's probably uh, LED lights that you can get for these that, you know, don't have anything to do with them. They're just, they sit off to the side, and then you can get your lights just the way you want them at whatever you're looking at. To get video with these, I start with my Sony A6000. Yeah, it's the original <laughs> model in this series. It's an APS-C camera. I have a Nooner 35mm f1.7 lens on here, and it's a fully manual lens. So if I'm going to take video through the microscope, I start by adjusting the aperture to fully wide open, which is f1.7. You can see that there. And then I move the focus to infinity, which you can see there. Just those settings alone, uh, you'll be good to go uh, for video. And these Nooner lenses, you can get them on B&H for, I don't know, about 80 bucks. They're fully manual. It's a very fast lens, and uh, it's, it's really, really a nice lens. So this lens has a 49 millimeter filter thread. So I have two step-down rings. One of them is a 49 to 37, which then screws onto the 49 millimeter thread on the lens. And then I have a second step-down ring which is a 37 to 28 millimeter. And then I just simply screw the 49 millimeter into the, into the lens. So now it's set up for 28 millimeters. And then I get a lights paraplan 10 power. It's got the little eyeglasses on it, which means it's a high eye point. The great thing about these lenses is that you can screw off the rubber 
eyepiece cup, which you use for glasses, and that has a 28 millimeter thread on it. So you can screw it into the second step down ring. And so now you've got a nice little A focal system. You've got the 10 power eyepiece, which replaces the 10 power eyepiece that's on the microscope. And your lens is set wide open at f1.7. It's a 35 millimeter, which I find works pretty good. And you set the uh, focus on the lens to infinity. All you do is pull the eyepiece out. I like pulling the right one out. That way I can look through uh, this eyepiece with my right eye. And I'm taking video through the other eyepiece with this system. And they don't like balancing too well, so you got to kind of adjust the straps to get it to stay balanced. Now you can look through the EVF, which I actually prefer doing rather than the uh, second eyepiece because it's kind of close in there. Or you can take the panel and pull it out and look, uh, look at the panel. So now I'm just uh, taking a video of the panel of the camera that would be taking the video through the microscope. And you can see at 7 power you get about 10, 22 millimeters field of view and at 30 power you're getting about one two three four just under five millimeters that's a really nice range to look at various things and you have enough magnification that uh, you can really have fun Anyway, then all I do on this camera is push the video and you can focus it, right? So you can just look at the back panel if you want, or you can look through the EVF and get video of whatever uh, you're looking at through this microscope. They're very nice. Anyway, I just thought I'd show how I get video through a dissecting microscope that doesn't have a trinocular port and it actually works quite well. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.